Welcome to Tomorrow. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. I'm joined by Carrie Ann, Jared, Jade, and Space Mike. We have got one final show in 2018. We're going to be talking about everything this past year. We might be looking forward to next year. We've got a bunch of really interesting news stories. It's going to be quite a bit of fun. And if you're a space geek and you want to have awesome conversations about space, you're in the right place. Stay tuned. Tomorrow Orbit 11.50 begins right now. Good morning. <laughs> I could I could see like you I have a preview screen and I can see when the open rolls and there's like this half second lag so uh, you know when I say a certain word Dutta rolls the intro and then everything goes and I could see that he rolled it and I went I don't have enough time to finish my sentence. Spell it up. Oh, all right. Um, you know, we had uh, an incredible year, uh, but we we did have some launches this last week. D despite it being we, Scrub Summer, are you sure? Scrub Summer doesn't feel scrubs, like we did. Scrubs, not yeah. Ruds. Scrubs, not I Ruds. I don't want no Scrubs. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. Uh, actually, I, I don't know this for certain, but it feels like... Uh, I would love someone in the community to help look this up. Was that the most number of scrubs in one day worldwide, <laughs> like ever? Like I think that was five scrubs in one day, correct? I believe so. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah. uh, Soyuz, ISRO, Delta, uh, Blue Origin, and SpaceX. Yep. Yeah, that was a lot of scrub. That was <laughs> so the pilot you, was like, no. <laughs> do you count Blue Origin because it wasn't an orbital launch? Uh, yeah, I would count it because it's still a rocket. It's I mean, a, yeah. we it's normally, a test flight because they announced it for once ahead of time. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so at least some of us were aware and they were webcasting. I yeah. mean, at least there's an Just element of solidarity through. there. I mean, if well, if you're not gonna launch it, I'm not gonna launch. If you're not gonna launch, I'm not gonna launch. You know, it's the holidays. Everyone's thinking about everyone Everyone else. got together like, oh, wow. well, none of us will launch. But <laughs> space, space Mike, launch? no, they scrubbed. Go on, cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. <laughs> I did. I, it, so instead of doing launch minute, I was tempted to build a, a second version of launch minute. It, that would count down like four <laughs> seconds and then stop, and then go to the next one, count wow. down four seconks and stop, wow. and then go to the next wow. one and just like. Yeah. Wink in the chat room says, "Don't diss ISRO. Uh, ISRO was the first one that actually launched. I'm not dissing ISRO, but they, did, they all on scrubbed. Tuesday, everyone was supposed to launch. It was supposed to be like launch Tuesday, and that's just simply not what happened. Yeah. But we did yeah. have some actual for reals these launches this last week. Space Mike. Take it away. Still a lot of launches this week. Still a lot of launches this week. Before the uh, scrub Scrubsember, Scrubmas, on Sunday, December 16th, we had an Electron rocket from Rocket Lab. And this launched at 1633 on December 16th from Launch Complex 1 at the Mejia Peninsula in New Zealand. And its payload was the Alana 19 mission. 13 CubeSats launching for NASA, and Alana means educational launch of nanosats. This was the 19th mission that NASA has sponsored of this. And in the same tradition that Rocket Lab has of naming all of their flights, this one was called this one is for Pickering. Pickering is the, uh, he's a New Zealand born former director of JPL who led the development of Explorer 1 back in the 50s, America's first satellite. So I thought that was a pretty cool tribute. But on this launch, some notable satellites were a pair of, of satellites called CubeSail, which are going to extend a solar sail ribbon between the two of them. It's not just a solar sail on one and a solar sail on another. They're both going to be sharing the same uh, solar sails. So that was just really cool and a beautiful launch. But next up, we do have a launch of a Soyuz STA Fregat M rocket at Fregat M Upper Stage. And this is the type of Soyuz that launches from the Corot Space Center in French Guiana with different types of avionics so they can launch from there. And this launched on Wednesday, December 19th at 1637 Coordinated Universal Time from the Soyuz launch area at Kuro Space Center. Its payload was CSO-1, or the Composante Spatial Optique, or the Optical Space Component. It's a French military Earth observation satellite that's going to replace their Helios-2 satellites. This is the first of three satellites that are going to be launched by 2021, and they have extremely high resolution imagery that will be able to capture around 20 centimeters from a 480 kilometer orbit. That's pretty impressive. So that was the first mission of this kind, and there'll be two more to replace the Helios 2 satellites. 
Oh, man. But next up, we have a GSLV Mark II rocket, which launched on Wednesday, December 19th at 1040 Coordinated Universal Time from the Satish Dhawan Space Center on Triharakota Island in India. And its payload was the GSAT 7A satellite. It's an advanced military communications satellite for the Indian military. It has 10 KU transponders that are going to be providing data for them. And this particular flight, I mean, the GSLV Mark II is a weird rockets. Its first stage is solid, but then those strap-on boosters on the side use hypergolic liquids that use ni uh, nitrogen textoxides and UDMH, unsymmetrical di dimethylhydrazine. Its second stage is also hypergolic using the same fuel as the boosters, but then the third stage is cryogenic using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So very weird uh, rocket, but this was a successful flight and their military communications satellite was placed into a successful geostationary transfer orbit. Whew. But moving right along, we have a launch from China. This was a Long March 11 rocket, which launched on Friday, December 21st at 2351 Coordinated Universal Time. And this launches from a mobile truck. It launches kind of like a uh, ICBM at the Jiquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. The rocket itself is a four-stage solid fuel rocket, and it's the fifth launch of this particular rocket ever of the Long March 11. Its payload was Hong Yun 1. It's a mission to verify low orbit broadband communication technologies that are going to be used in a, a constellation called the Hong Yun constellation. It's a project that's going to have 156 communication satellites in low Earth orbit at around an altitude between 160 to 2,000 kilometers. It's going to transmit anywhere between 500 megabits of data per second. So it's really similar to kind of like a Chinese Starlink in a way, but uh, maybe a little bit less capability. In any case, it's gonna become operational in 2022. So congratulations to China for that successful launch. Oh, and actually there I'm was one things. more launch that happened uh, this week that uh, there wasn't any footage of that we were able to gather. And that was of a Proton M rocket, the second Proton rocket of the year. And it was launching a uh, Lago Vesta uh, military communications satellite for the Russian military. This also launched uh, Friday, yesterday, December 21st at two, uh, 0200 coordinated universal time uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. But due to it being a military launch, there wasn't any footage of this actual launch. So I feel like I should have been one beeping while you were talking about stock. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have been like, boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Space Mike and I had a bet a while ago as to who would launch more in the year. Would it be the, the China? Would it be China or the United <laughs> States? And, uh, Mike, as we take a look at the, uh, the, the scorecard here, run us down that. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be that. I mean, yeah. China has had 37 launches this year, 36 of which have been successful. The United States has had 33 launches. Um, one of them was a partial success. Russia has had 19 launches, 18 successful. Europe has had eight. India now seven and Japan six for a total of 110 launches from Earth, 107 of which are or have been successful. Well, and or maybe still a few more left in the year too. So, <laughs> and, and the the one asterisk for the U.S. is actually early in the year was the Zuma launch, and I wasn't sure mm -hmm. whether I should put the asterisks there or not mm -hmm. because was it success? Like, was it a success? Wasn't it? We don't actually know. So, personally, in just my opinion, I think that it was a success because the rocket actually did deliver the payload into its intended orbit and it separated successfully from the rocket. But apparently, according to Northrop Grumman, the satellite was not successful and it did not, it wasn't operational. So, mm -hmm. as far as SpaceX, the launch provider, is concerned, they did their job. They successfully placed the payload into orbit. In fact, yeah, but the satellite didn't work, or at least technically didn't work. I mean, that's probably the official story. My own theory is that it actually is, you know, a secret military payload that's working just fine, but they wanted everyone to think that it didn't work. But that's just my <laughs> own and Actually, we, no we we laugh, Mike, do you hear the helicopters coming? Uh -oh. You laugh, He starts cutting out. That's actually happened before in the past, where mm -hmm. they'll set up a satellite yeah. and it emulate a destruction of the satellite. Whoa. Oh, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. they'll, they'll send debris back down and be like, oh, we lost the satellite. Uh -oh. Lo and behold, two years later, you're like, 
uh, actually, it's right there. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a shuttle mission for the DoD, right? That d- they deployed one satellite uh, on at least on the record, it deployed one satellite, and then next thing they knew, the spotters found like four satellites in the same orbit, and they're like, huh? huh. How about get huh. there? How yeah. about that? Huh. So, Sneaky. or or. It really did crash back up. We have no idea. So I have no idea whether there should be an asterisk no there or not. But <laughs> it all it, the signs seem to be like, yeah, there should be one there. And Mike, to your point, um, you know, if you get a package at your doorstep and it comes all smashed up, you got to return it and get a new one. It feels like that that didn't actually make it there the first time. You got to do it again. That's the second delivery. So I would say. Yeah, I mean, e- even if it wasn't, even if someone came by after the fact and smashed it on the ground. It's, <laughs> well, I mean, that seems like, tis the season, seems like something Somebody's someone rolling would do. up to the There's orbit and just, oh, 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 so uh, there is, um, there is no way I can win the bet, by the way, at this point. For, the, for those watching, uh, maximum in the U.S. will be 35 launches if the other two uh, launches happen this year. When the other two launches happen this year. I'm sorry. When <laughs> the other two launches happen this yeah. year. Yeah. So okay. even with those. Yes, satellite this morning. Hopefully that'll still go off before the end of the year. And hopefully we'll still see that uh, other military payload, the NRO, NROL-71 from uh, United Launch Alliance launching on their Delta IV. And the uh, Pegasus launch has been pushed back definitely into early next year. So, yeah, yeah. that's... And, and there's still and, like three launches planned from China before yeah. the end of the year as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm not going to come even close. Uh, <laughs> uh, and in this week's uh, launch calendar, in the first break, um, I, the SpaceX uh, launch scrubbed this morning, and I didn't have time to add it to the calendar. So I believe they're working a 24-hour recycle. Although check their Twitter account for that, um, which means that that would be tomorrow morning, Sunday. So mm-hmm. it's not in the calendar. Uh, but then also the Delta IV NRO uh, 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 71. Mm-hmm. Uh, I th- I think is like tentatively scheduled for no earlier than December 30th. Yes. But there's no other information on it, and no earlier oh. than doesn't mean they've actually set that date. They're just kind of like it won't be before right. here. So we put it in the calendar yeah. at that date because you know maybe we'll but, see. You know who knows. Yeah. So that's All what right. happened this last week. But let's talk about the year uh, as a whole because uh, you know it's the last <laughs> show last show of the year. Yes. I think it's time to talk about our favorite moments. Aww. Of 2018. Okay. Jade, I'll start with you oh, because yes. you owed me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, are we just doing general space stuff? Oh, whatever you want. Like, okay, th- cool. Things in 2018 <clears throat> that made you, like, you were like, oh my God, this is amazing. All right. You don't ha- I'm not going to make you limit it to one thing, although pick <laughs> one. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, no. Um, so there's a few things. I know that a lot of people are going to bring up. Uh, Falcon Heavy. Yeah, I think um, we're all going to bring it. Absolutely. Yeah, and all of us for say. different reasons, probably. Like, yeah. personally, for me, the Falcon Heavy, uh, the successful launch of that was really just awesome this year because just the repercussions it had on everyone, um, it got, like, everybody excited. Like, people mm. who don't even care about launches were like, did you hear about mm-hmm. that car that's zooming around in space? Like, yeah. Um, so just watching the public reaction to that, and it always makes me happy to see people get excited about space. So... Mm. Which I know that none of you feel that way. <laughs> so, no, no. <laughs> and it has a very you. unique sentiment. Just you. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 And <laughs> also, um, Parker Solar Pro. Like... Right? Yeah. All right, yeah. That was a yeah, few, yeah. couple months ago. Uh, uh, time yeah, was. A couple months, few months ago, ago now. Yeah. Yeah. Just did its first perihelion yeah. a couple months ago. I think so. that's really exciting. And um, But why? 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 Well, just because I had been following kind of... I had been following the uh, the news of Parker Solar Probe and everything, and I just think that the the types of science it's going to be doing and the type of data we're going to get from it is like really really interesting because as much as we know about the sun, there's still so much more to learn, and I'm excited to see how crazy our home star really is. Home star. Home star. Like runner. Yeah, I was. Oh, was that that I got you. My home. Sorry. I know what's up. Millennial here. Huh? Just kidding. You that was bad. Oh, oh, I know. Just kidding. I, just I kidding. know what Homestar Runner is. So. <laughs> Sorry. I, so. I mean, uh, uneducated. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to take up the rest of the airwaves. So all right, all please right, Jared. move on. We'll go down um, this way. So, you know, I was super excited when Insight landed. Um, yeah. Just because it's, it's going to be such great data coming from that. And they now have the seismometer on the surface of Mars and... Hopefully soon they're going to be taking data from it, and we're going to actually figure out what the interior of Mars is like, and then mm-hmm. be able to compare it um, back and forth between how the Earth is, and then we could see whether uh, planets, or terrestrial planets, form the same, or if they form uniquely for wherever they are. Um, that would be a mind-blowing result if it turns out to be unique. 
Um, even if they're the same, I still they'll still be mind blowing. But it'll yeah. be like it'll be like yeah. extra mind blowing if they turn out to be like <laughs> like completely unique from each other. Um, also, uh, I was I was pretty thrilled about Electron um, mm-hmm. coming oh, online yes. and really starting to like hit its stride. Um, that was all this year, right? Yeah, that yeah, was all this like, year. Yeah, so, yeah, and it really it was. I mean, Electron was really like stepping up, and it, and like they're starting to sort of get very close to delivering mm-hmm. what they've been talking about, and they're doing it very quickly too. Which Wait, is, how are they not delivering what they've been talking about? They just had back to back lunches, lunches, lunches. <laughs> I wish I had back to back lunches. <laughs> Second lunch. Well, it is New Zealand, which is so yeah. The Lord of the Rings. So, so, um, so wow. um, but they just had back-to-back launches. Well, they're been not putting. They're uh, not at their pace yet. That they said. I think they said every. But once their pace every, they've claimed is 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 crazy pants, right? It's like a yeah, launches but a I year. mean, like, why wouldn't you be able to? I mean, I would love to see a crazy pants pace like that. Like, <laughs> holy moly! Like that would be amazing. Like we have that much stuff to chuck up there. Like sure, let's give it a go. <laughs> so you know, um, but overall, yeah. my overall favorite moment um, this year, which I'm sure it's just basically going to be the same for everybody, was Falcon Heavy. Oh, yeah. So okay, and why Falcon Heavy for you? So for me, Falcon Heavy was a real like cultural moment. It was the since we're at the 50th anniversary um, of Apollo 8 mm-hmm. uh, this weekend, um, and for the next couple of days, um, that was sort of like my generation's Apollo moment so far. So, yeah, for now. So, for Isn't now. that an incredible thing to think about? Yes. It gets better from here. And that's what makes me so optimistic yeah. about it, is that, you know, <laughs> it's going to be great. But um, you know that I thought that the that the Roadster uh, was a stupid payload. Yes, you did. Um, and we <laughs> yeah. had... It, you you I, we had much so vi- thought it was the dumbest thing ever. And then I saw it, and, and I saw everybody's reactions to yes. it, and that just completely changed how I felt about it, because it was no longer... It, it, you know, I think with the Roadster... It, if, if it had just been the Roadster, I probably still would have thought that it was a dumb payload. Yeah. Um, but really, what did it was <laughs> Starman. Yeah, like Mike said, oh, yeah. Starman. Um, with Starman, you could you could see yourself, you know, actually being in the Roadster. There was like something to connect to in the mm-hmm. Roadster, and that's really what made it for a lot of people who got to watch it a very personal thing. Yeah. Um, and that's yeah, yeah. that profoundly affects you on an emotional level. So it wasn't just something like, whoa, this is like a great engineering (laughs) achievement that this has happened. It was also like, wow, this is like, like this is like some fantastical yeah, thing that's it's like, actually it's happened. It's like a scene out of the Jetsons, but IRL. You yes, know? Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. And like, and, and so. a lot of people grew up watching that cartoon, and now it's like they're literally putting like dummies in space and flying. Them. Yeah, I mean, there was a so Star cool. Trek episode where there was a car in space, right? Yeah. Oh, so, there was. We, we talked yeah. about that. Yeah. So, yeah, it happened. So, <laughs> yeah. we just gotta wait a couple hundred years. <laughs> to go get it. So, yeah. MBD, that's funny. Carrie, and your favorite moment? <laughs> um, well, so the thing is that, so from the chat room. Yeah, good idea, yep. This is oh, going to yeah. take me a long time. I apologize for all of the button pressing. <laughs> yeah. um, Space Vogel says, my favorite thing this year is Hayabusa 2 mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prismara yeah. says, uh, Falcon Heavy dual booster landing with all that footage of Starman from space. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manuel <laughs> Correa says, test telescope? Um, Hell Desk says... Wait, test telescope. Oh, well, I, um, yeah, transiting exoplanet survey satellite. Ah, uh, test telescope. Yeah, that's pretty exciting, too. I thought it was test. Me too. I was like, 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 what test telescope? Test. 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 Copy, telescope. copy. Yep. Hell Desk says, test competition. I'm changing my answer to the Marco twins. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> right. CubeSats. Yeah. Oh, Interplanetary oh, CubeSats. So that for, was, that was my Jared moment of me going, <laughs> that's the dumbest thing ever. That's not never going to work. Right. And um, I, the thing I personally learned in 2018, which mm-hmm. I actually learned prior to 2018, but we learned in 2018, mm-hmm. never bet against JPL. <laughs> yep. Never <laughs> bet against JPL. Their ideas might seem crazy. Never bet against JPS. <laughs> so it's the right kind of crazy. <laughs> it's the there right kind of crazy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, that's not going to work. Like they're, they're too small. You're not going to be able to get a comms package that makes any sort of sense there. And um, when Insight, that was uh, that was part of the Insight package, yes. right? So they, they jettison those out in advance. Insight's landing. We're getting like real time awesome telemetry coming back. We didn't have to re mm-hmm. reorient MRO or nope. any other weird assets. We just used those. Step, so that was a really great first step, but I can envision potentially, maybe, I'm not, I'm saying that JPL needs to do this for me now. Um, why not send back live EDL video if they can, right? If, they, if, mm-hmm. if there isn't something obstructive, like shooting yeah. through plasmas would be hard, but like, 
maybe they can, because part, part of why they can't do it is bandwidth from Mars, but if they have just a little bit more bandwidth, maybe we can get some low-quality live video from Mars on That'd entry, cool. descent, and wow. Might even take photos. So well, but just real time photos. I real time that, photos. So. Uh, and actually that first those first photos that came back were like the fastest I've ever seen them get stuff back. Yeah. yeah. They usually you have to sit there and there's like this awkward mm. while we landed. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. right. And then they get oh, yes, but this was like we landed funny. photo. Right? Yeah. Yeah. By the way, they're still talking to them. Really? Yeah, no, I was, I was totally wrong. Still yeah, they flew by Mars. They weren't supposed to go into orbit of Mars. They just flew by, and they're still in contact. This is insane. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Not bad for basically what was an intern. You know, hand the interns this project. Yeah, you never that is so amazing. bet yeah. against JPL. Nope. That, that's never. my lesson of 2018, which I will relearn, I'm sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good lesson to Be learn. Because, because they have just these crazy ideas that sound like they won't work, and they just, like, um, uh, Mars 2020... Uh, 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 Curiosity Lander, mm -hmm. the, the MSL, the Sky, the, the crane. sky crane. Yeah, mm -hmm. Th that's crazy. That's just that's just crazy. Anyhow, I'm sorry. Who'd have thunk people well, at JPL knew what they were doing? <laughs> well, now that they've converted to starting their projects with metric. Oh, oh wow. I didn't realize they had done that. <laughs> yeah, uh, Luke Bowering uh, in the chat room says, the same JPL that botched a billion-dollar MCO because of metric imperial mess-up? Uh, <laughs> oh, well, well, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot more yeah, to that JPL, story the than same, just... The same JPL that has landed the only freaking <laughs> devices that have actually landed on Mars. Yeah, those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, the same, the, uh, the same JPL that has uh, uh, done the only orbiters of vehicles around Jupiter. Hmm. So, anyhow, anyhow. I'm oh yeah, the same, the <laughs> same JPL that's lesson. the same JPL that's only done the uh, that's done the only orbiter around Saturn as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Weird. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird about so that. Weird. Was New oh. Horizons JPL? No, that no. was uh, John Hopkins. Yeah, okay. John Hopkins. Hopkins. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, sh I actually should have known that based on guests this year. Okay. We should have. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's okay. Right. Like, whoops. <laughs> I had uh, Johnny Johnny Chi says inside Osiris Rex, Hayabusa two, Tess, Mepi Colombo, Parker so. Parker Solar Probe, etc. Uh, Tempe One D. Bepi Colombo was fun because of yes. the little animations that uh, Issa yeah. would make. Yeah, yeah. It was Issa I'm, that was getting ready to right? cry yeah. again, like the Rosetta no. ones. No, 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 so, no, with no, little no, no. Little oh, Filet and Rosetta are now asleep on the surface of the comet. Filet's it's just, just like, oh my god, no! <laughs> <laughs> Forever wow. sleep. And then all the stories after it. Felix back from the dead. No. <laughs> wow. Zombie amazing. probe. Zombie probe. probe. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tammy 1D says the Virgin Galactic test launch. Mm -hmm. Which one? That was pretty impressive. Uh, I assume the one that went to space. I assume, yeah, yeah. Most recent. Yeah. Uh, Launchpad Astronomy uh, says getting Hubble out of safe mode and back to three gyros was a highlight. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that was great. Although so. a low light also going uh, like into safe mode. That was like an because uh, there was a lot of stuff that happened around then, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Hubble went into safe mode and we lost we lost something else. That's right. Uh, yeah, there was oh, a bunch gosh, of stuff that went offline. We, which uh, Chandra? We lost that's, yeah. Chandra. We uh, we lost Kepler. Um, did we Dawn, do something on Mars too around that same time? Well, opportunity. Was that that same time yeah, though? Dawn. Uh, yeah, Dawn. I don't think so. It was a couple months before that. So, yeah. yeah. It was yeah, kind of like scrub, scrub Timber, right? Where we just lost a bunch of telescopes all at once. Yeah. Or a yeah. bunch of spacecraft. That was a somber episode. I remember that. Yeah. 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 And actually, uh, to kind of uh, piggyback on what Mike was saying about Kepler, we lost uh, Kepler and Dawn in the same week. So, yeah. But it was also expected ends of those missions as well, yeah. so it wasn't like a surprise right. uh, that that ended up happening. We knew that the missions were going to end sometime this year. We just didn't know when they were going to run out of fuel. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Same let's... kind of bittersweet ending like um, 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 Cassini. I mm -hmm. had a brain fart there for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Planned uh, ending of Cassini and everything like that. It was beautiful, but still bittersweet. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's never yeah. easy to say goodbye. Aww. Um, let's see, uh, space, uh, spacey, space, I can't say, space, Y, UK, says, amazing times watching the Hayabusa 2, Osiris, Jack, Spike, Beep, Columbo, so yeah, a lot of those things have, uh, continued to, uh, they hit a lot of notes for a lot of people, I'll be exploring the cosmos, SpaceX Rocket Lab and Virgin launch, um, and then, uh, this was also kind of fun, Liam, Whiteley, uh, says, hashtag, dear moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, that oh, was a good one. Right. Yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. Space Mike, you, you were, you we're big into Dear Moon, right? I mean, that was that seemed to be like something oh, yeah. that touched you deeply. Still am. Are you yeah. kidding me? That's freaking incredible. And 
Yeah, I mean, I, I know that like m me myself have no chance of being one of the artists that that would be chosen. And yet at the same time, like as a person who creates content, I know this, you know, people would have arguments as to whether or not this is art. But, you know, the whole idea is that people that do create multimedia or that create art or that fall into the categories of the type of artists that Yuzaku Meizawa wants to bring along with him on that trip around the moon. You know, it's all of those artists' responsibilities around the world to step up their game and create better artwork in hopes of being chosen. And I feel like that's going to have a huge, maybe, maybe not uh, uh, a huge change, but, but it's going to have an effect on our, on our culture worldwide. I mean, if people are making incredible artwork, and especially the people that are chosen, the artwork that they will create, I mean, that's going to be a huge moment. In the same way that Starman was what we connected to with the whole Falcon Heavy flight. And just like Jared, I mean, I thought the whole uh, thing was stupid, too, of launching the Roadster. And if it had just been the Roadster, I probably would still feel that way. But just like you know, all of us, we had that connection because of Starman. So I feel like the art that people are making, and I mean, Winter Garden is a good example. He made a really amazing video and a whole bunch of really crazy music to in kind of a pitch of, hey, pick me. Let's, uh, I would love to go and be the musician that, that goes around the moon. That's the type of stuff that we're going to start seeing, especially as it gets closer and closer towards the flight actually happening. I mean, I just, the possibilities blow my mind. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you say you have no chance, but I, I would make the argument that the, the point of this exercise is to send someone other than engineers, right? You look at Apollo, it was yep. all test pilots. Right? Yep. Um, and, and test pilots and then eventually a little bit of engineering slash science. Um, One geologist. Right. That was it. That was it. Otherwise, test pilots. But we haven't really sent artists, but more specifically, instead of using the term artists, I would say people who can inspire humanity. Yeah. And, right. Uh, you, you know, that, that takes many different forms, and art is a very ethereal thing. It doesn't have to be just paintings or just music. You know, doing something like this could be considered an art form. Should, dare I say, should be considered an art form. Yeah, and he wants to go bring filmmaker along on that flight, too. And even just hypothetically speaking, let's say I was chosen, I would gladly give my seat away to someone like Will Smith or Snoop Dogg or Taylor Swift so that they would be able to have that outreach and have that bring in that people and raise awareness because i mean i feel like you know a celebrity would would bring in the same way that falcon heavy uh, uh highlighted space and brought space to people's attention that you know weren't necessarily following what's going on i feel like something like that even even a celebrity i don't care who it is would bring in a large amount of people and would just raise awareness and it would be a huge thing so um, yeah, but I don't think you would happily give that seat away. I think you would. I think you would potentially give the seat away, but it would be like begrudging. But, yeah, like, exactly. Like you'd be willing to do yes. it, but, but you'd still be like, oh. I'll give you my seat, but please give me a shout out while you're up there. Yeah. <laughs> at least tweet at me. All right, Will. I'll give yeah. you my seat, but you have to do the Fresh Prince theme while you're on the dark side of the moon. Okay. Hey, so, so there we go. Yeah. So Space Mike, yep. we're still there on you, go. and then Carrie, I'll loop back to you for some more comments, and then your your stuff from. 2018 as well. Uh, but well, well, Space Mike, why don't you continue? Other things, you, you mentioned Dear Moon but, and, and a little bit of Falcon Heavy. Like, what else in 2018 really inspired you? There was two other things that really inspired me. And and this this might seem kind of weird, but uh, earlier this year, there was a Japanese launch of their really awesomely named rocket, the SS-525-5, <laughs> which is a <laughs> tiny little rocket. It's a so tiny little remember. rocket. I mean, this thing is, you know, a large hobby class rocket, essentially. And, <laughs> excuse me, it launched a three-unit CubeSat into orbit. It's the smallest orbital class rocket for, for launching a dedicated CubeSat into space. And that just blew my mind. And just everything about CubeSats this year, I've learned a lot about CubeSats this year. And seeing Marco and seeing all these different rockets that are coming out that can be a dedicated ride for CubeSats, like the Electron rocket, like this new uh, Japanese rocket, and like a whole bunch of different startups and, and uh, different government organizations that are kind of moving towards this smaller class, you know, again, my mind exploded with possibilities. And after seeing the success of Marco, I mean, let's, let's send a dedicated uh, CubeSat fleet 
to, to set up a communication constellation around Mars so that we never have to worry about that again. But that's, oh, yeah. that's their purpose. Yeah. And all of the other satellites that are in orbit can just focus on what their job is and don't have to be relegated towards, you know, uh, uh, g giving communication or, or uh, boosting the network or boosting the signal, so to speak. Mars link. Um, that was a highlight. <laughs> but, uh, my other really cool highlight just from uh, – uh, I, th I thought it was cool, but it also could be another possibility, was a lot of the EVAs this year, the spacewalks around the International Space Station, especially some of the Russian ones <laughs> where they were just chucking CubeSats with their bare hands. And it <laughs> felt like, 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 a, like, like space football or, sp or space baseball or something. And there were lots of times during, during the two EVAs like that this year where the two cosmonauts were egging each other on to see how far they could throw them and stuff. You need to be careful with this one. Do not throw this one straight down. It needs to go a particular direction and don't launch it too fast. Otherwise, you're going to make it tumble too much. Like, calm down, guys. And then it's like, ah, no worries. I thought that was incredible. That could be the beginning of some space sports. Who knows? Oh, CubeSat checking. That would be epic, like shot putting. Oh, well, yeah. well, you could also Cute do um, <laughs> um, Quidditch. You could do Quidditch in space, right? Kind of. I guess. Why, why I is this bad? Why am I? What, ha what did I do? Nothing. Just, you, you know. Just, I ruined the, everything, The potheads. The Harry potheads. Really it's fine. There's a company okay. in Japan that does uh, parabolic flights. I've forgotten their name at, at the moment, but um, they actually have this really funny thing that they've done because for some reason in Japan, witches are kind of a a, a thing and not just Harry Potter, but this company has developed this broom that has like a little saddle on it that people can sit on. And the broom itself actually um, has gas jets. So when they're on their parabolic flight during, you know, the 30 seconds or so when, when they're weightless, they can be scooting around the cabin on this little gas powered broom. That How have we not aired Aww. this video in, in our space, show yet? People are already working on it. <laughs> wow. I, I do not understand why that this video hasn't been in, in one of our episodes yet. Uh, oh, there is. Yeah, I, I should find that. I'll, I'll share that with you guys. All right. Um, <laughs> well, so uh, what else? Did you have more items for 2018 that you like got you inspired and excited? I mean, other than all the stuff that we've already talked about, I mean, it's Falcon Heavy, uh, the Virgin Galactic flight you're reaching the uh, 82.7 kilometers, you've seen Rocket Lab have all of their amazing launches. I mean, just this year has been, oh, one other thing that wasn't necessarily an event per se, but something I really liked to notice this year was due to the success of the commercial crew program and the commercial cargo program, there was a lot of new fixed price contracts that NASA and the U.S. government dueled out this year uh, that are milestone based for so many different things. The lunar payloads for small landers to bring scientific experiments to the surface of the moon. Lots of habitats that could be either for the deep space, space gateway or the, a Mars transfer vehicle or some sort of follow on to the International Space Station, uh, commercial space modules, commercial life support systems. I mean, the success of those commercial cargo and commercial crew programs has really uh, enabled NASA to, to start doing a lot more type of contracting like that. And I think that it's going to be such an amazing thing. I mean, right now, a lot of the, the building blocks were put forward this year, but next year and even in 2020, we're going to start seeing the results of some of those contracts that were made this year. And again, just mind blown that the, the possibilities of the progress that could happen now. Uh, Carrie Ann, we'll hand it back to you. More stuff from the chat room and then your own personal stuff as well. Um, I, You're not just the voice of the chat room. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Launchpad Astronomy <laughs> also mentions that, uh, if I can hit all the buttons, uh, we saw ourselves in Starman and it was a brilliant move. Um, yeah, that so seems to be echoed from everyone up here. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I did, heavy? But like, <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I just live vicariously through all of you, really. After heavy, you were, <laughs> you were excited, right? I mean. Yeah. I think I was more excited about other firsts that happened a couple of years ago. Um, I was more excited then. Like, Heavy, I just didn't think Heavy was going to go up until, like, even under the 10 count. 
I figured, like, this isn't going, so it doesn't matter. Oh, jeez. I, like, <laughs> I, I had so completely written it off, yeah. totally. It's going to scrub. That it was like, let's light this. And I was like, that's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, that's not going anywhere today, you guys. Like, I don't know what's happening. And then it's it's literally so heavy, it took forever to lift off. Mm-hmm. It just kind of lumbered off the pad. Lumbered at best. Yeah. So, like, I was still, like, my state of denial was still, like, a, a couple of T-plus seconds mm-hmm. easily. Because I was just like, I, pff, this isn't happening. <laughs> like, so it didn't, it didn't, I didn't, if, I, w- I can't talk. I, I wasn't affected in the same way as other stuff in the past because... I just simply didn't believe it was going at that time. Not that it would never go, just that it wasn't going. It wasn't going then. Um, so uh, mm-hmm. that that was. I mean, yeah, of course that was exciting. That was really interesting. And I, um, I actually have a slightly different sentiment than everybody else here about Starman. Like Starman was cool and all, but I was already excited about the car. Like I thought that that was interesting anyway. Mm-hmm. I and I didn't think it was like interesting in so much as I thought it was hilarious. Because <laughs> like like I, I that's one of the ways that I I and Elon really align is like what's the dumbest thing we can put up there like I don't know I've got this old car sitting around all right cool let's just do the car like for some reason, <laughs> like, a mannequin soon, in it it'll be like, great as soon as I heard that I was like that's hilarious like <laughs> of course you freaking would like it's almost like he it was like an I love lamp moment to me I'm like <laughs> I don't know uh, I it's got this like, car. You know, yeah, like it just it reminds me of the first uh, uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo mission or, or the test mission where it had a payload of a wheel of cheese on board. Right, exactly. And <laughs> I, I think that kind of stuff is like, a I don't know, I think that's funny. And I, I don't, there's a lot of other ways that Elon and I very much so are not different or very different, but like that's the one thing where I'm like, yeah, I think it's hilarious. Like, sure, why not? Let's do it. Like, who cares? Like, let's just. Wait. You, no, you know, there really was a full to see you and Elon just talking about random stuff and joking around. That yeah. was hilarious. Yeah, like you know, I I have <laughs> often said that he's essentially a twelve year old child, and I'm like, I'm not much better, honestly. So, <laughs> like, if it includes like probably like a good dad joke and a wheel of cheese, like I'm in. Like I, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy in that in that kind of capacity. Um, everything else is like. I mean, everything else that really has already been mentioned, right? The the successful Virgin Galactic test flight. Um, it's been really fun to cheer on Electron. It's been really fun mm-hmm. to cheer on um, even Blue Origin of, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we don't, you know, when we later, can. Like, when we can. When we know they did that something. Like, oh. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's such an amazing time that we live in that, A, we get really pissed off when there's scrubs all in one day. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. there's, there was the potential to have all of these launches in one day. Mm-hmm. And it, it felt like people were, like, excited, but it wasn't like, dude, do you have any idea? But meanwhile, they all scrubbed in one day. We're like, what is this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, I can't. I believe this happened. Like, for as long as we've been doing this show, like, there haven't even been, like, amateur a, a number of launches in a day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's that kind of, it, that's the part that's cool to me is that there's that many things that we can be upset about that, uh, you know, that Electron's webcast isn't as pretty as SpaceX is. Like, <laughs> that's what we're nitpicking over. Are you serious I, I, right I, could, now? I couldn't hear you. Could you say that a oh, little bit God. louder? I just couldn't. Uh, Shots that fired. Some webcasts are not as pretty <laughs> as others. And it doesn't Ugh. matter. Uh, you know, I mean, the, like, but that's the thing that we're all, like, ticked off about, that we're all, that we're nitpicking with, right? That there's... There are that many things that we can that we've gotten used to that um, you know that even on uh, the SpaceX webcast this well, the SpaceX scrubcast this morning um, <laughs> was there was some there was one line I forget exactly uh, the way it was worded but it was something along the lines of like and this is a uh, um, totally oh gosh what was it somebody tweeted it out and it was so perfect but it was something along the lines of like. This is a very rare, like, expendable rocket, like a SpaceX expendable rocket, and how unusual that oh, is mm-hmm. now, right? You that know what I'm turned unusual quickly, didn't it? That, and, but it, would, it turned unusual very quickly because it was like, what do you mean they're throwing it in the ocean? That's <laughs> terrible. Like, <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> because this is what's been going on for years and years and right? years and years and years. Like, mm-hmm. That's why Bezos was able to go down to the bottom of the ocean and grab all of the things because it's just sitting there, mm-hmm. man. Um, that's the way this stuff has worked forever. So... But I, I love that it was thrown in there too. Of like, uh, this is super weird, you guys. But we're just we're just gonna throw this one away, okay? Just so you know, don't freak out. 
Like, this is what's happening now. Um, that, you know, that a rocket looks funny that it doesn't have legs on it now. Mm-hmm. Like, there's those, those those sorts of things. And I apologize that all this stuff sounds like it's SpaceX stuff, and that's not what I'm intending. But um, I, I just love that, that that's what we're nitpicking over now mm-hmm. and that we don't yeah. even realize. But I think my, my singularly, like, most recent favorite moment was <laughs> I have I have the amazing opportunity to sit at work and look up and often see uh, live views from the International Space Station. It's one of the, the few perks that I have with where I work. And it's awesome to look up and go, is he just hacking away at that thing? <laughs> like, <laughs> Here's Johnny! He was! Like, he was. Vendors are coming <laughs> in and we're trying to like give it to him or something and explain what's going on and, and be like, oh yeah, this these are live views from the internet. This space isn't an important station. part of this space ship at all! <laughs> and they're like, is that inside or outside of the station? You're like, no, that's outside. They're like, well, what is he doing? I'm like, I don't actually know. So I guess we'll learn about that later. Why did they have shears like that up at the space station? Dude, you never know, It's dude. sort of like right? sneaking in Disneyland so. with a knife. Like, <laughs> it's, it's okay. I have this right here. Like, what are you talking about? I smuggled um, this on How did you get that in? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely amazing. Because the rest of my work kind of keeps me relatively busy. But then you look up here like, oh, what is happening? Um, <laughs> you have spacecraft flying away. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got so it at, at, at my job. Uh, uh, with our live view of the space station, oh, we had yeah. the we had the, the view uh, there of it, and like we'd all gather around it every few minutes and kind of just look at it and they go, "Wow, they're like just chucking everything off of there, aren't they?" Yep. And it's just like that's so, a lot of debris. So this <laughs> is how they do it now, mm. right? Okay. Right. So yeah, very so rustic. Right. Literal rocket <laughs> surgery. It's <laughs> finally happened. <laughs> we need a new T-shirt. It's like yeah. malpractice almost. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think I think that's malpractice. it. Is that it? Isn't necessarily like a singular moment per se, or even like a group of moments, but just the the culmination of the entire thing mm-hmm. of you know, like I said, that we're, we're there's so many things to look at now, yeah. and now we're getting picky about what we're watching. <laughs> we're getting picky right. about how we yeah. get it. We're it's getting picky about how often we hear about something. Like we. Bef- I, you know, eight, six, eight, ten years ago, we were like clamoring for anything, anyone to say anything about anything, to do something about anything. <laughs> like, please, I don't care if I only get like six seconds of the cell phone Chinese launch, you know, some dude risking his life, God forbid. But like, it was just anything because it was so exciting and it was so interesting. Mm-hmm. And now we're like, mm, yeah. They should have chosen a different yeah. angle. Like that was the other angle's <laughs> too wide. You can't even the see the rocket. Like, yeah, how like, stupid. Come on, they've got. <laughs> come on, we know they've got 1080 capable cameras in China. Come on. Yeah, it's just so silly. <laughs> Stop taking us for it's a fool. So silly. But I, that's. I think that's kind of, you know, being able to look back like that. I think that's my favorite thing. Yeah. Uh, I like to write out. There was so much stuff that happened this year too. Something that I had to just look up to make sure that, that was this, this year was Blue Origin's in-flight abort test. Oh, How yeah. incredible was that? Oh, yeah, they yeah. expected yeah. in-flight abort to destroy the booster, and it survived and yeah. landed successfully. Yeah. Like, was holy that, crap! Uh, for, incredible. For, for Star Wars. Walker? Do which one are they called? Mannequin Skywalker. Uh, Mannequin Skywalker. Yeah, Mannequin Skywalker. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Yeah. Uh, for an extra $20,000, we'll Madden hit Spy- the b- board motor for you. Yeah, Madden Spy- Skywalker's been on a few flights, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like mm-hmm. to wrap up this part of the conversation um, with things that you're looking forward to kind of 2019 and beyond. Like, w- what are some of those things that you're, you're just exci- excited for? SLS. <laughs> 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 no. Oh, sorry. But, no, I mean, you can't... Look, some people are legitimately excited for a space launch system. And if, if you are, then... Hey, hey, we probably have, like, 30 RS-25 uh, test firings to look forward to next year, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dutta was yeah. even laughing at that one. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, I'll just go ahead and put myself right, on the ahead. firing range and say that, uh, <laughs> that when SLS does eventually fly... Uh, mm-hmm. Um, I sure hope Europa Clipper gets it. Um, so, because that would just it would just solve so many problems with things with that. But uh, back to 2019. But you're making an assumption. You know, th- uh, this may be a, this topic for another time. You're making an assumption that no other rockets by that time will be capable of that much up mass. Yes, that's true. Uh, so. And I don't think that's a fair assumption. Uh, well, we'll see. Oh, well, wow. so. You guys are typing so fast, yeah, I can't even keep up. Or rather, Jefferson Spaceship, whatever <laughs> it's being called this week, uh, is going to be doing uh, some, uh, hopefully, some uh, test hop flights like the, uh, the, the uh, what was it called? Not the Dragonfly, but the uh, Grasshopper program. Uh, they're going to be doing those type of tests next year, or at least have said that they would, and there's hardware that's already coming together. And if you look 
hard on on Twitter and the the SpaceX uh, subreddit or the r slash SpaceX subreddit. People have already taken pictures of some of this stuff, and hardware is coming together. So yeah, that uh, that VFR spaceship thing could possibly start uh, coming together next year. Yeah, and you and I, Ben, actually have a bet uh, on that as, as to well. Do we just, uh, I, I say it will hop. Next year, yes, mm-hmm. and you say no, it will not. Uh, yeah, I say it will not hop uh, by December thirty first, twenty nineteen, and we set it at one kilometer altitude as well. Right. Like it, that, so. uh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it has yeah. to. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's our. So we already have a bet for twenty nineteen running. All right. So, so All right. Should be good. So, <laughs> uh, Jade, you what? Uh-huh. What you excited for? Um, well... <laughs> that, that was a sentence, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I somehow have a decoder now. Um, well, kind of like Carrie Ann's sentiment with 2018, it's not too many specific things, but more so the trend to, to keep seeing it be perpetuated. So just the advancement uh, and evolution of commercial mm. space flight. I mean, we saw so much success. I mean, recently with Virgin, uh, we've seen successes with, obviously, SpaceX and um, Blue Origin and the, some of the smaller aerospace companies. And I think that next year is really going to be the year of, you know, smaller aerospace. It's going to be the year of commercial. It's going to be the year of, you know, really bringing kind of space flight to the people, uh, making it more accessible and democratizing it as a whole. I mean, everything from like CubeSats to like, it just everything's becoming more accessible to your everyday, like whether you're like an amateur astronomer or you are a retired engineer who's been at the game for 50 years. And... Um, mm-hmm. I'm just really excited to see where that goes. I mean, I, I work in a sector where we, we try to reach out to those who otherwise wouldn't have access to these types of technologies or opportunities. And it's so exciting to really see industry go into the direction of, hey, like, if you, you know, pair up with someone or if you pair up with this company, like, you can actually have, like, a really good hand in sending something up to space, working on some sort of scientific payload. And I think that is just swell. <laughs> I'm trying well. to decide if I should say. No, I'm not going to just yet. Oh golly, um, I'm scared. <laughs> no, tomorrow's working on something. Uh, and I'm what? Going, I'll leave yeah, it at that. I thought you were going to poop later, all over my dreams. Later, later, later. later. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just I'll leave it at tomorrow's working on something. No, no. <laughs> not only am I not pooping on your dreams, uh, there are dreams too. Yes, exactly. Uh, yep, exactly. Yep. for the ride, Jeannie. Yep, yep, yep. exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, you talked about SLS, but you didn't talk about what you're interested yeah, in. Yeah, I think you talked about that. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, Ultima Philly and the data yeah. that will come back from that, which we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, with that, so I'm really excited to kick off 2019 with a flyby of an object of the type that we have never seen before. It's so far away. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so excited. The astronomers uh, are like going crazy over yeah, here. Yeah, uh, also uh, really excited about about uh, TESS uh, and what will be the first round of data releases from TESS. Um, And we'll see if it really is going to end up being the exponential exoplanet explosion, uh, I guess E-cubed, with that there. So um, with that, I'm also very much looking forward to a project that has been going on for quite a few years now called the Event Horizon Telescope. Hmm. Um, And in 2019, they should be putting out the data where they are going to have essentially the first images of that supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. Like Sagittarius A star. Yep. They're going to have. Just gonna be like Hi. a black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be it so like, I feel like I um, could just like go into yeah. Photoshop and show you what that's going yeah. to look like by yeah. just painting it all black. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Um, anyways, anyways. <laughs> um, and then also, I'm super looking forward to uh, the thing I'm looking forward to the most um, in crude space flight, at least. Um, you know, I know commercial crew is a really cool thing and everything like that, and I really appreciate it, and I like what it's doing. There's and I a like, butt coming. But, but, big old but. the suborbital space race, <laughs> yeah. it's finally here. Mm-hmm. We've got Blue Origin, we've got Virgin Galactic, mm-hmm. and we're in one corner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be awesome. You know, the number of people that have gone to space has the potential to increase by like maybe 25 to 50 percent in yeah. one year. Yeah. I, I, and I'm yeah. so we could, yeah. excited Th- for that. This won't happen at first, but we could send more people into space in one year than have ever gone to space through all of history yeah, combined. It's only like 570 some odd people have been mm-hmm. to space. Bonkers. That's not so. happening in 2019, yeah. but like no, th- but there's potential there. I'm hoping that we can at least get 
like like twenty percent. Like, can we get a hundred more people to go to space right. in twenty nineteen? Cool. Um, which would uh, that would bl- I think that would just basically destroy um, any year on record mm. as to how many people this is their first time going to space. And I don't care that it's suborbital; they're going to space. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and that's that's amazing. So, well, we had that conversation about the. That would be over like fifty flights a piece if they were to try to get more than uh, what is it like five hundred and sixty something people that have flown in space yeah, so but, far. But again, I, I well, yeah, that, that's again not happening in twenty nineteen, and, yeah. and I think we're assuming by that point more suborbital providers will be online. And or they'll have additional vehicles, right? There's nothing mm-hmm. to say that Blue Origin and or Virgin Galactic yeah. only has one rocket and one launch pad, much like an airliner. Uh, Virgin Galactic is even easier to see it this way, but much like an airliner, why wouldn't you have just a bunch that fly from a bunch of different places? Mm-hmm. And then you can see this potentially turning into a suborbital uh, point-to-point transit system. Although I'm not actually sold on that just yet because there are problems with that, but... Maybe. I mean, who knows? There are people much yeah. smarter than I potentially working on that. And just to kind of throw into that, too, with the suborbital, the increase of suborbital orbital flights, it's not, I'm also not just excited for people, I'm also excited for the experiments that are going to be carried on that. Mm-hmm. Um, because for a lot of universities at this point, you have to ride share on an orbital launch in order mm-hmm. to do whatever mm-hmm. experiment you want to do. And now uh, universities are going to have the opportunity to do suborbital flights. Um, NASA is going to have the opportunity to do suborbital flights, you know, with rapid back-to-back flights, um, like they've Flew four payload, uh, four experiments as payloads on the Virgin Galactic flight, and then those four payloads got transferred over to Blue Origin, and they were supposed to fly um, on the New Shepard flight four days later. You know, like holy moly, that's like a very rapid turnaround. Scrub Timber for that. So yeah, but you know, th- then Scrub December happened. Yeah, so, yeah. December, but still, December. it's going to be really exciting because it's not just an increase of people in the space; it's also going to be an increase of like you were talking about the democratization of space. So now academia and even mm-hmm. just just regular people are going to be able to access space and kind of do their own experiments. Us normies. So, yeah, That's the awesome. norms. The normies. The plebs. Uh, space Mike. You know, something that well, probably was, was uh, one of my favorite moments from the whole Virgin Galactic flight uh, of that I didn't even notice until way later was there was someone who was involved with Virgin Galactic somehow. I don't know if they were an employee or if they just knew Richard Branson. I don't know who that was. Maybe the, the community knows what I'm talking about. But there was a guy who uh, flew, he, he convinced them to, to fly a ring that was an engagement ring. And after it landed and Richard Branson gave the ring uh, to, to this guy, he proposed to his, his girlfriend, now fiance, because she said yes. And I was just like, holy crap, like that, that is so crazy. Like, you know, and he said some sort of thing like, you know, with this ring that's now flown to space, you know, type of thing. <laughs> so I think there's going to be not just the academia part, but I think there's going to be a lot more kind of, Let's call it fun stuff like Jeez, that. that I think he's really just going to bring even more uh, of uh, non-space fans who don't know that they're space fans yet. Space Mike, you're excited things about uh, what? What excites you about 2019 in in the cosmos? <sighs> Man, well, obviously, I'm really excited about the whole commercial crew program. SpaceX and Boeing will be having their test flight missions next year, and if everything goes well, they'll have the first uh, actual crewed missions with people on board next year. That'll be pretty incredible. Aside from that, though, I mean, something that I have followed for a long time is the Google Lunar X Prize. And this year, it expired without anyone winning the prize, but a lot of the companies have continued on. Mm. And I mean, we have uh, uh, Space IL, the Israeli team that uh, is going to be launching their uh, lander on, on a SpaceX rocket um, early next year. Um, we're going to be seeing a, a flight from uh, Team Indus. Uh, we're going to be seeing some stuff from Astrobotic. I mean, a lot of these teams have, have now have contracts with NASA, and I'm just really excited that uh, the whole Google Lunar X Prize wasn't for nothing, so to speak, and that some of those landers that were developed over that time will still be flying and landing on the moon next year. So yeah, that was a pretty cool announcement from NASA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Carry on. Chat room and you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the chat room and you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we're getting a lot of Dragon stuff, right? So yeah, Johnny yeah. Spacer says Dragon 2 chess launch. Vogon says Crew Dragon. Uh... D Pod Dolphin SLS BFR New Glenn. Oh yeah, New Glenn is going to be amazing. That's from Blue Origin. Although that's not 2019. That's no. Hopefully, we'll start seeing parts of it. 
Right, parts. So, this is Blue Origin, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to talk about this. You're going to see this as, as it's launching. You know, I mean, <laughs> they're going to be like, it's going to start launching. It'll be off the pad, and they'll start their webcast. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Don't even get the countdown. down back there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, wow. Anyway. Uh, hey, everybody. Jeff from Low Earth Orbit here. <laughs> <laughs> We're starting our webcast now, just to let you know. <laughs> Citizen uh, N3CKF uh, says, yes, commercial crew. Uh, Helldesk had an interesting one. Australia slowly working towards getting an actual space agency funded sometime mm. over the coming decades. Mm. So Woomera might live again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Forgot about that. Right? So, yeah. Space Vogel uh, launches to the moon from former uh, Google Lunar X Prize contestants. Some of them still plan to go in 2019, as Mike definitely said. Um, let's see, where else are we going? Uh, yeah, we got uh, Crew Dragon. Oh, wait, sorry. I have to hit all of the buttons. But LaDonna says Crew Dragon Test and Starship Hops. Uh, Janeth mm -hmm. says Crew Dragon Test and Star. Oh, no, wait, sorry. It says I saw a moon landing. Moon Land Rover mission in January. <sighs> I can't mm -hmm. talk. Oh, that's going to be cool. Chandrayaan 2. The, it's a lunar orbiter slash lander mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lander is going to have a rover as well. So this is really a three-part uh, uh, mission. you got the orbiter, you got the lander, and you have the rover that's going to drive off of that lander. So yeah, that's going to be really cool. Two, a crazy mission. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Daniel McCool says, possible dream chaser. Dream Chaser test oh, flight. I love the Dream Chaser. Yes! <laughs> I, I, Lifting I, I, bodies. I was surprised that you guys Lifting didn't like, bring that up when you were talking about it. I didn't realize so. that was coming in 2019. Actually. I did not know yeah. that either. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah, well, possible. Daniel's not wrong. It's possible. Now, are we, no. talking about, uh, are we talking about drop tests, or are we talking about an orbital flight test? Because I don't know if, uh, at least I don't know if officially there's an orbital flight test planned for the, the, the cargo version of Dream Chaser next year. Uh, honestly, I would have to look into that as well, but it's at least it's back on track. Um, yeah, they got the yeah. approval to like build the thing at yeah. this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's really cool. I, I think the Dream Chaser is just it's one of those things that's it, it just it looks cool. It looks like how you kind of want the future to be. And I know it has yeah. wings and wings don't do anything in space, but I don't care. It it's just cute. looks cool. It's it's cool. It's cool looking. The yeah. yeah. HL twenty rides again. <laughs> oh wow! So. Uh, Degoose nineteen eighty four says U.S. return to space flight. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, I think mm -hmm. uh, a lot of us are excited flight, about. Yeah. Well, hang on, U.S. humans returned to flight. U.S. have been in space flight yeah. and never stopped I, space yes, flight. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 so. yes, yes. Uh, Time Tradesman says, Starshot, James Webb, Starship Final Design, probes of Jupiter moons, and so much more to wait for. <gasps> We're not getting the final yeah. Starship design until at least 2031. You won't see a final design until it flies, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll still be oh, out no, on the path as, after as that. it's flying. We're going to change designs after that, too. We're going to have, like, Block 7, and then the next one after that is going to be uh, Mark 8 or something. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly yeah, that okay. Actually, they're going to bring different parts to orbit, and they're going to work on it in orbit. So <laughs> to just get some garden shears and How resourceful. cut through it. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, a couple of questions in the chat room. Dream Chaser is real? Uh, yes. So, yes, it is. Yes. Um, and then the Citizen N3CKF said, did I just get quoted in the show? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Um, and I realize, I realize that your uh, ham radio uh, handle is just difficult to say on air. That's all. Um, in any case, um, yeah, I think... Uh, I, I think 2019, the things I'm looking forward to uh, are those sort of like next big milestones kind of in general. Um, I think... Um, the ones that push us forward? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and all of those things, right? Like, uh, no offense to uh, Electron or Rocket Labs USA, but uh, I feel like they're kind of like, hey, yeah, no, we got this down, you guys. And I'm like, but you don't. Because um, a lot of people have said that in the past, and then you're like, oh, no, that's just not exactly a thing. Three launches do not a completely reliable source make. Anyway, not the point. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to see like the next things that they are able to do in 2019, all of the many things they do in 2019. Um, I'm excited to see all the Blue Origin stuff that they finally get released to us. I'm excited about, <laughs> I'm excited about you know anyone who's making any sort of hops, whether that's Blue Origin or SpaceX or what have you. Um, I'm excited for all of the crew stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone always talks about SpaceX stuff, but like, there's a whole other vehicle going. Like, Boeing's got stuff going on, man. Yeah, they're like, putting blueberries in that one. Uh, they're putting blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> Smurf outfits. Smurf, uh, yeah, Smurf. They're so cute, though. Like, how do you not like them? They're 
you're so neat. And They're big and poofy. Tim, yeah. yeah, they already asked her. I did a, like a beautiful, like, what is that called? Yeah. The, the, oh, I don't know. Anyway. The dance? Yeah, that dance yeah. thing. Blue anyway. suits are great for when you have to ditch in the ocean. Wow. So. Okay. I am uh. still excited nonetheless. Like, the, I have had the a privilege of meeting some of those people, so to watch some of those people that I've met fly, um, I, I think is going to be really exciting, and that's that's really cool. And um, yeah, I'm excited. Starliner, right? I'm so excited about all yeah, the things. Starliner. Yeah, Starliner. Yeah, which I think really cool. fun. I think it's fun that Star they played Liner, off of Dreamliner Liner. and their other liner series. Yeah, from yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like cool. it, It's kind of it's fun. I think that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, too. Uh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. There's two other. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of like non SpaceX stuff that I'm excited about, there's two uh, new rockets that uh, will be flying next year. Um, well, sort of new. Um, one of them is the Simorg rocket from Iran, and they've already had one test flight of just the first stage, but next year they're planning the first operational flight of the Simorg rocket, and it's going to have a couple of satellites on board. The reason why I'm excited about it is because that's the rocket that they're planning on launching their own human space flight program hmm. on, and they just have their own. It's a small capsule that's only big enough for one person, so it's basically their Mercury program, but they've had to develop all the technology themselves, all the economic bands on them, which I find really impressive. So I'm looking forward to, to their progress next year. Um, but we also have the two, um, uh, uh, excuse me, the Falcon Heavy flights. Uh, but aside from that, I'm really excited too about um, Vector. We had Vector Space on, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to have their first uh, uh, test flight of an orbital uh, launch of their Vector R rocket. And that's going to be sometime in possibly even next month, as early as next month in January, if everything goes well with their preparations. So just another uh, small sat dedicated launcher. That's going to be really exciting to see. Yeah, that should be really um, interesting. The other Between thing I'm really excited about is that Russia is finally, mm -hmm. finally going to continue their construction plans at the orbital space station. They've been waiting on their Nauka module for a long time, mm -hmm. and they have moved forward with a little bit different plan. They have a node module called the Uzlovoy module that's uh, uh, basically a node that has six uh, docking ports on it to add even more modules, and they're going to launch that first before the Nauka module, and that's scheduled for sometime around June, I believe. So I'm excited to see, because once that launches, then and once Nauka launches, they have a science and power module that's going to be launching not too long after that, that everything's just been waiting on this one module that's been delayed for over a decade. So next year, we will finally see the rest of the, of at least the Russian segment, start making progress on the rest of their construction plans. Interesting. So uh, in the chat room, um, Stephen Gray says, what about mast in space? And, and not just about mast in space, but like Firefly. Um, Mike mentioned Vector. Um, Firefly is back, by the way. Yeah, there's yeah. relativity space, right? Like they're, all these companies are coming online and they're doing yeah. some really amazing things. Go out, find their Twitter accounts. Please follow all of them. They're posting all different kinds of fun stuff, all different sort of um, engine yeah. tests and firings. And um, the relativity space, they just... 3D printed this gigantic tank. It's mm -hmm. it's like as big as this freaking room. It's gigantic. <laughs> it's huge, and it looks gorgeous. And that's going in for testing. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like I think sometimes we th always think of like the bigger companies, and we still think of like not Blue Origin as being like a little guy necessarily, but like you know we don't think of them as being as big as a Boeing, a ULA, a yeah. SpaceX mm -hmm. kind of situation. Um, but then even like these smaller companies, like one more layer down, I guess. Um, are doing some really, really interesting things. And we'll, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff that they're going to come out with that we're not even like aware of. It's not even on our radar yet for 2019, oh, for yeah. sure. That is, that's I mean, also really exciting. How companies are existing right now, building hardware right now, but are in dark mode because mm -hmm. they don't want to go the... They're, they're taking the Blue Origin route instead of <laughs> taking the Virgin Galactic. <laughs> there's Black literally one I'm called there. Stealth Space Company. Yep. Which is Acrospace? Something like that. I don't weird. remember what their actual name is. Ad Astra? Uh, I no, I don't, I'll have to go look it up. All right. Um, that was neat. Yeah. Uh, so so <laughs> we, we do actually have that some uneasy. Yeah, news that we do want to actually get to this week. Yes. Uh, so we're probably going to do it quickly because, <laughs> yeah. yikes, this is a long show. So we're about gonna, an hour. Yeah, yeah we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, some news from this last week. Before we do that, special thank you to all the patrons of tomorrow who have helped to make this uh, segment happen. These are our Escape Velocity patrons. They pay uh, $10 per episode, so $10 for this specific episode. It really means a lot to us. It's what helps, it helps us actually do the show week after week, helps keep the lights on, uh, build incredible things like this set. 
uh, whatever just fell that you may or may not have heard like on the microphone. Rice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what just we'll, fell, we'll but we're going to probably have to replace Mark. that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the patrons help help to uh, help to pay for the show and make it happen because this doesn't. And the repairs. And the repairs. <laughs> and the repairs. <laughs> repairs for the space station. Uh, the repairs yeah. for the space station. We've this, had an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get the shears. <laughs> <laughs> Dada, we need your knife. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, but seriously, uh, thank you to everyone for contributing. Right if you can't contribute financially, that's okay. Head on over to community.tmro.tv. Uh, time is great too. Uh, just you know, post in the post in the community forum. If you've got something that you're really good at that you love doing, 3D animation. Maybe you're good at programming. Maybe you're good at whatever. There's something that you enjoy doing that you're good at. Let's find a way to marry that with your excitement for space. There's some way to do that, and, and we'll know be, we'll better know how to do that if you post in the community forum. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we are going to whip through at lightning speed our news from this last week. We'll be right back. <laughs> As Dada continues an EVA repair <laughs> on station. What would we do without him? Yeah, thank you, Dada. So A brave. AOS. <laughs> um, uh, you know, let's go through these fairly quickly. Um, I think I've got Jade, you up first. New yeah. Horizons. Tell us about that. Yes, so we are officially all clear for mm -hmm. a very close flyby of Ultima Thule. Uh, we actually had Dr. Kirby Runyon amazing. on just a few weeks ago where we got to talk about all sorts of amazing New Horizons stuff. And um, as of December 18th, 2018, Dr. Alan Stern has officially given the A-OK -okay to do the original flyby trajectory, which actually gets three times closer to this object than we did to Pluto. Oh, wow. Yeah, Ooh, and nice. uh, basically using the Lori imager, um, which I think this is a Lori image. No, this is. This is the Lori image. Uh -huh. uh, essentially, three weeks of extensive uh, looking at. <laughs> we found that there's uh, <laughs> no notable moons. There's no That's what rings. the scientists call it, by the way. They're like, yeah. uh, we're in looking at hey, mode. I'm here for the everyday <laughs> guys. Uh, we spent yeah. about 21 <laughs> days looking at. Yeah. Um, and after, after a strong analysis of, uh, of detailed uh, looking at. Of looking looking. at. <laughs> so, Anyways. Sorry. Uh, so we found, you know what, there's nothing there that could cause us any potential harm. I mean, uh, the speed upon which New Horizons is barreling towards this object, a grain of rice could do something quite fatal. There's a beautiful image or is that um, live? graphic representation. It is live, coming yep. to you live. No, it's not. Um, so it's traveling about 50,700 kilometers per hour at this Woo! point. And like I said, uh, larger grains of dust could be fatal at that point. And um, again, thanks to Lori, we have uh, basically found out that, you know what, we're safe, we're good. The reason why they dictated that December 18th deadline to figure it out is because that is the time upon which they would have to make a trajectory change should there have been some trouble in the neighborhood. Um, so basically, it's going to get so close to Ultima Thule that we are going to get a resolution between 30 and 70 meters, aka 98 and 230 feet. That's impressive, I think. Dang. Um, and that's not the only record that this beautiful spacecraft is going to be uh, breaking. We already know um, it's the first mission to Pluto. Uh, that flew by the dwarf planet back in 2015. It's going to be the first to observe a KBO, and it's the farthest. Ultima Thule is going to be the farthest planetary KBO body. Being a, uh, Kuiper belt object. Oreo. Mm -hmm. Oreo. Just kidding. Yes, object. Classical Oreo. Kuiper belt Classic object. Classic well. wow. C K B O. C K B O. C K B O. So this is really exciting. If you are interested in tuning into this flyby, it's going to be flying by 12.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on January 1st, which is technically 9.33 p.m. December 31st for us mm -hmm. on Pacific Time. Mm -hmm. You can do the UTC stuff because we both know I'm not great at translating that. 9.33 UTC. No, sorry. 9.33 PST. I'm wrong. 
He's wrong. So, so <laughs> this is going to be really exciting. Again, we had, uh, if you want to check out the episode with uh, Dr. Is that AM or PM? PM. 5.33. Uh, PM for us, AM for them, because it's going to be midnight. So the UTC, day. it'll be uh, 0533. Wouldn't it be 1633? No. Well, how would it be 16? No, it should be 5 in the morning. Yeah. So yeah, 533 so. in the morning. Uh, I'll, I'll take your yeah. Yeah. Coordinated yeah. universal time. So. 15. It would be 9.38 a.m. your guys' time. Right. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yes. <laughs> so if you would like to check out the fantastic episode where we spoke all about New Horizons with Dr. Kirby Runyon, just go on and just search a few videos down. It was only a few weeks ago. Swell guy from yeah. Johns Hopkins. And that was technically a science episode. I'm sorry. Tomorrow's science. Yeah. Oh, right? well, I, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. I think you're yeah. right. If yeah. I'm smart, I'll put a thing up here like those other YouTubers do. Yep, over here. In this general in vicinity. vicinity. But it's going to be hilarious when I forget to do this. And, we are <laughs> our hands. and there's just a and bunch of comments or, of like, you guys are so unaccountable. <laughs> or, or people are watching them like uh, on iTunes and they're like, that doesn't work here. Yes. <laughs> and Joe. All right, moving on. Moving uh, on. Unless there was anything in the chat room. Nope, we're good. All right, cool. Oh, Cheers. Yeah, we Astronomy me. We found something really far away. So yeah. far away that uh, the astronomers who discovered it have nicknamed it Far Out. No. So, oh, yes, they okay. are. There you go. So a oh, running yeah. together of the two words, by the way, not two separate words. So this uh, this object is preliminarily called 2018 BG18, uh, a.k.a. Far Out. Um, and it is now the record for the furthest distance we've discovered an object at. It is 120 astronauts. Astronomical units away. Just to remind you, one astronomical unit is the average sis- the average distance from the Earth to the Sun. And, th- and Pluto, when New Horizons flew past it, uh, was at 39 astronomical units. It is 18 billion kilometers away from it. And this was done uh, during a actual hunt for pl- what I'm going to call Planet 10. Not Planet Nine. Because <laughs> uh, by the Car- you're counting Pluto. Yes, I am. Uh, mm, by the Carnegie, look at that. yeah, by the Carnegie Institute and also the University of Hawaii, they were using the eight meter Subaru telescope up on Mauna Kea, uh, which is a gigantic telescope, um, which, unlike most other giant, te- uh, gigantic telescopes, uh, has a very wide field of view. So it doesn't look at a very mm. narrow part in the sky. It looks at a, actually a very fairly large uh, field of view, which is why it could end up finding these kinds of objects. Um, now, far out is really far out. If Actually, we, wait a minute. No, help me out. Why can it find those objects if the view is wider? I don't understand. Uh, so if you are wider out, um, you can actually sort of get a little bit better data on seeing a movement through the sky with objects. Oh, so we're seeing so, the things that move not in relation to the other things in the sky going, yes, oh, hey, exactly. that, that's weird because it's going... Spin. Yeah. Yeah. So with a but with even, a but you're, with a larger area, so you're still doing the but same. But you're not getting as much light, then, right? No, because, but you you are getting the same amount of light, and you're getting the same amount of resolution. You're just yeah. looking at a bigger part of the sky with that. Then. Okay. That's the so, beauty of Subaru All Sky Drive. Yes. Oh, that's not wow. that's not wrong. So. No. Yeah, the, and the uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, I think it's a boxer telescope, right? So okay, oh my only God. data got that. So uh, the That's orbit nice. of far out is quite far out. Um, we think it's uh, spherical in shape, and it's about 500 kilometers across. We know that it's pinkish in color, huh. um, so that indicates that the surface is likely ice, and it might be. Vol- I thought you were talking about the orbit. I'm like, the so, orbit is pink. No, it's the orbit's not gold, pink. Okay. You can tell so, from this line that it's yeah. pink. It wasn't too hard to find it. We just followed the line in the sky to it. Um, anyways, uh, so obviously like any newly found object, we need to do some more observation sessions to nail down its orbit, but it's looking like this orbit's going to likely take over a thousand years. Not the Jeez. farthest thing out that orbits um, in our solar system. You could technically say uh, these hyperbolic comets, these comets and, that come in yeah. and then they're gone, mm-hmm. you know, they go out to interstellar space, have the longest orbits because um, they, just, you know, they're gone just like that so how, how's um, that again? Derek? It's like <laughs> that's great. just like that. Yeah. So um, yeah, but far out is far out, and that's far out. Man, yeah. Bro. Oh, wow, yeah, wow. wow. <laughs> All right, anything in the chat room? I no. know we're going through this, making it really hard for the chat room to do anything at this point. <laughs> we, like, can't oh, we can't give any words in. We are no, no, no. We're we're good. There's the the dwarf planet thing continues on. It's fine. Ready, go, Mike. Yes. <laughs> Dwarves are people too. <laughs> 
Dwarf planets are planets too. So this week uh, we had the successful landing of the Soyuz MS-9 spacecraft. And I do believe we have a, a short video of the crew uh, taking final pictures before they closed the hatch and entered into their spacecraft and undocked from the International Space Station. This was this week, as I said, this was on Wednesday, and the whole undocking process and landing back on Earth all occurred during the same day. Now, um, uh, they handed off the, the, the crew rotations, and on the Soyuz MS-09, there was the Russian cosmonaut Sergei Prokopiev, uh, the NASA uh, physician astronaut Serena Onyon Chancellor, and the both of them, it was their first space flight for the both of them, and since they had to, to stay a bit longer because of the whole Soyuz MS-10 launch failure, uh, the both of them logged 197 days, 17 hours in space. But then their uh, fellow astronaut on board, Alexander Gerst from Germany, uh, he had a stay in 2014, so now his total is at 362 days in space. And even though the orbital module, which I believe you can kind of see a bit of the stuff sticking out from, oh, no, <laughs> not, not from that view, sorry. Uh, but yeah, there, I mean, the orbital module was fine. It was able to undock from the reentry module and burned up before the reentry capsule uh, reentered the atmosphere and uh, um, had the whole hole and did that whole surgery that we've been joking about to, 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 to plow into it. But everything was fine, and they were able to land back down on the ground. And uh, I, I really love the slide that they get to, that they uh, have to kind of go down from Whee! that. But everything is <laughs> fine with that. And right now, uh, Expedition 58 has officially began. And right now at the space station, we have Oleg Kononenko, uh, the Canadian astronaut David St. Jacques, and the NASA astronaut Anne McLean. And they're going to be joined in February by Alexei Ovchinin and Nick Haig, who both were on that Soyuz MS-10 failure back in October that uh, the rocket failed to reach orbit, but they were pulled away safely thanks to the secondary launch abort system. So both of them have now been rescheduled officially for the Soyuz MS-12 space flight in February. So that's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah, and the two of them are going to be joined by another NASA astronaut, Christina Koch, as well. So, yeah. awesome. The nice. news that this was able to come home safely and that those astronauts didn't have any problems. Nice. Uh, Zimmin in the chat room asks, uh, is that the longest space flight for a rookie? Hmm. Oh, good question. I don't know. That might, that, well, I feel like there might have been a longer one at Mir, but I don't know for sure. That's a yeah. good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that no, was a yeah. good question. We'll don't we'll know. Could we'll, be? we'll look that down. Yeah. So. All right, uh, I am going to do your last story, Jared. So, okay, go for uh, it. Yeah, ready? No, you go, no, you go for it. Oh, I thought I, you were supposed to. I'm going to steal I'm your story. I'm All right. stealing your story. I mean, I, instead of going to break, All right. one more story. Ben's going to do some astrophysics. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants that. That would be amazing. <laughs> so uh, there was a collaborative study between the University of New South Wales, Australia, and the Instituto de Astrofisia de Canarias, in Spain, hopefully I did that correctly. Mm, yeah, it looks probably. like Carnitas, um, but yeah. <laughs> and they uh, developed a new way to try to detect uh, dark matter and a new method to measure it as well. Uh, they use the faint glow of stars that have been stripped away from galaxies. So there's stars moving about freely in intergalactic space, and although they are pulled on, they will travel towards where most of the mass in the cluster is, which in most Galaxy clusters, the majority of that mass will be where the dark matter is. Mm -hmm. And we can watch these stars move in a direction where there is essentially nothing there. Um, at least nothing that we can see uh, with our own That's telescopes. So, so previous methods, they used gra uh, very time-consuming gravitational lensing reconstruction. So basically, we'd look at the mass distribution of the cluster, and then we'd try to figure out based on the lensing of light from galaxies behind it, where the dark matter was at. Hmm. So, and that's really difficult to do that because you have to run some serious supercomputer models in order to pull that off. Um, we also use spectroscopic observations. So basically we looked at how shifted to red or blue and which direction um, were those, uh, and that's where that was at. So this, is, this, is, this new technique is just literally aim the telescope and leave the shutter on. <laughs> so that's literally what it is, um, and this is really this is a really cool image of uh, of the cluster that they were looking at, um, where 
there in the this image right here, those that blue area are the stars that have been stripped away from the galaxies. Um, but if you just look at the cluster itself, you really can't tell with any other techniques where those stars are at. Um, so they're planning to study six more clusters like this just to verify the accuracy of this new technique and. This is basically going to allow us to look at large numbers of galaxy clusters extremely quickly, so that way we can get a tremendous volume of data as fast as possible. So, um, and that's that's hopefully going to be a very big piece of helping solve the uh, dark matter mystery that we've got going on in our universe right now. It's weird so. that that line bounces in space like that. Yeah. It's convenient. I don't, I don't know why we didn't just look that? at the we line. Known if the shutter mean. wasn't open the whole time. <laughs> so magnets. Yeah. Magnus, so it's magnus. Magnification. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> no, well, that's an old Disney ride. Yes, it is. Uh, yep, yep. From All the right. Monsanto Corporation. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, but before we do that, a thank you to our Escape Velocity citizens who have contributed $10 or more to this specific episode. We also have our Orbital citizens who have contributed $5 or more to this specific episode, and I just realized that, like, I didn't check the spacing, and so there's that one weird row in the middle that has messed up spacing. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, again, your contributions to the show help us keep the lights on and help uh, help us keep doing this week after week. It allows us to do 50 shows in one year, right? Woo! Yeah, this is the first time we've had this many shows. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is a, a record for us, and I'd like to think that they're not just shows for the sake of doing shows, but all of them have at least some semblance of quality to them. Oh! Yeah, yeah, sometimes maybe it's a bad moment. Quality. Maybe sometimes it's good quality. Well, there's quality. Sometimes there's it's no quality. quality is there. There's qualities it's, to it. Kind of quality. Show. There's a quality. <laughs> uh, but we do appreciate it um, qu quite a bit. I, it's what allows all of us to be here. We couldn't be here without uh, you, the community of tomorrow. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, comments from you. On demand. I almost said, I, we're not supposed to say comments from last week's show anymore because that's not true nobody anymore. Nobody knows what you're saying when so you talk about it. Say, so say just, that, Ben, yeah. including you. Yeah, so. Comments. Words. From you. S words soon. Wow. We've always looked to the stars, they guide us, give us comfort. Help us find our way. We see ourselves out there. When we look up, it inspires us. And we long for something we don't yet know. We yearn to go there. So, we venture forth. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. Many think we stopped exploring. But we know our journey didn't end. We've only just begun. Orion is functioning perfectly at this point. Come with us and explore tomorrow. AOS, and while we were in the break, the chat room actually came up with the answer to the rookie question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kay McCoy, again, with all the buttons. Uh, Musa Marinov was in space for 365 days on his first space flight, uh, and that was on Mir, mm -hmm. uh, which is funny because yeah. Jared's like, well, the second one was also long. It was also, it was on Mir. I was like, well, what was his first one on? Mm -hmm. He's like, hold on. And I'm like, what do you mean, hold on? It better have <laughs> freaking been Mir, because that would totally have been Russia yeah. to be like, oh, yes, we have space flight. We now tell you, like, what is happening there? Um, yeah, well, but we no. Have our space stations for a little while. Mm. Right, yeah. right. Like, uh, Mir zero. It's fine. Uh, 
um, Paulius. Yeah. <laughs> they pulled a Zuma with Paulius. <laughs> oh my god. Paulius was a space station that was a giant space laser, and they said that it failed to reach orbit, but I bet you anything it actually did. Right. Holy crap. Ah. So I was like, what, what do you, if it wasn't me or Jared, tell me what it was. Not that Wiki is like the end all be all, but like. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 it was me. It was me. I was like, okay, cool. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, so to answer your herky question, uh, thank you to Kay McCoy and to Jared and to Detta for getting all of that uh, together so we could mm-hmm. present a little package for you. Um, all right, let's get into some of our on-demand comments. Last week we had uh, Orbit 11.49. Turns out we have a very soggy solar system, but I got yelled at for not saying a moist solar system. Moist. Uh, the you're thing welcome. is, he likes the alliteration. No, the no, no. Soggy I'm, solar system. No, yes. No, no, that's not why. The reason it turns out we have a very soggy solar system is because that's the exact quote that Jim made in the show, word for word. Yeah. And so I... I so don't I, get mad at us. Get mad at Jim. Fine. That's why I did it that way. I did in the Discord channel say, should I change soggy to moist in your honor? Not I mean, kidding. don't know. I, I'm, I'm fully on the boat of soggy solar system. I, for one, as well, love alliteration. And if it came from the man's mouth himself, then... Yeah, that's what. So that's what we, uh, and that, that was settles the, it. The man, the man mouth was Jim Adams. He was the <laughs> former NASA deputy chief technologist. Uh, so um, I'll start. Actually, I think I have the first comment. Uh, these are in no particular order, so I'll just do them in the order in which they're in this system. Uh, and this is Chris Totaku, I believe. Uh, and this is from the uh, Tomorrow community. I imagine how cool it would be when a couple of thousands of years we find the remnants of those Voyagers. This is talking about how Voyager 1 mm-hmm. and 2 mm-hmm. uh, have left our uh, uh, local solar system. Uh, actually, there is a documentary on this. Uh, it's called, it's called, called, he knows where I'm going. It's called, half of the people already figured out where I'm going. It's called Star Trek. Uh, it talks about V'ger. Uh-huh. And, uh, it's a documentary on what happens. In a couple thousand years. And yeah, actually, that's a few hundred years. Yeah, look, you thing. got no laughs. Uh, you got laughs out of Mike and Dada. <laughs> oh, come on! You got a few disappointing Come on! I mean, what? I was just hoping that it would have been something better than that. But, oh, you know, I didn't get the as- so. astronomers, but I got yeah. I got the rocket geeks. Yeah. Cool. Ugh, lame. I Anyways. thought that was funny so. and amazing, and I enjoyed it. I mean, it was okay. Hopefully, by the time we get to V'ger, we're not tiny humans. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. i got to see who has what here. Uh, Jared, you have the next one. Yeah, Nikalis42 from YouTube saying 82.7 kilometers is not space. It's only space for us, not the rest of the world. 100 kilometers is space because you can do one complete orbit before falling back to Earth, not 80 or 82.7 kilometers. Thank you. <laughs> and false! <laughs> That is false. That mm-hmm. is not correct. Uh, and actually, I have a fairly lengthy reply on that. Yes. Um, but to sum that up, if I may, I, did you want to sum it? I mean, you know it as well as yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, I basically, you could you could technically do an orbit at one kilometer above the surface of the Earth. You, could you do just it have at to one meter. Yeah, yeah you could just have to expend a tremendous amount of energy and have one hell of a heat shield in order to protect <laughs> you from doing that. To be clear, you um, have to spend more energy than we are capable of actually producing. By the way, right? I that's think, not a real thing today. I think during one of our shows, we actually someone who was watching. Actually, calculated the, diff- the different orbital velocity from 100 kilometers to one kilometer, and it was literally like 50, like it was literally like 75 kilometers an hour. Like it was, it was marginal at best in terms of that. Uh, but you so, can't. But going through the atmosphere, not a thing, because you've got it's like pushing through like pea soup, right? You have to constantly have some forward momentum mm-hmm. pressing yeah. on this atmosphere, which is then generating, so then you have this tremendous amount of energy to keep the forward momentum, plus now you need this insane crazy heat shield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, there was um, there was a mission by ESA, um, the European Space Agency, called GOES, um, which I'm Googling it real quick, um, to get a gravity field and steady state ocean circulation explorer. Um, they had, so the design of the spacecraft has fins on it, and then they had an ion engine on the back, and it flew at an altitude where uh, where atmospheric drag was a very significant thing. And that ion engine would basically fly it through the, you know, maintain its velocity through the drag. And they didn't use thrusters for its orientation. They used the fins oh, for its orientation. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So it is possible. It's just it's a tremendous amount of energy. To yeah. And the reason, yeah, yeah. I, uh, the reason I thought it was important to bring this up in the show, I know this was your comment, but mm-hmm. why... Is that it? There's a common misconception that altitude is what makes an orbit, and that is mm-hmm. absolutely not true. Velocity is what makes an orbit. Mm-hmm. 
How high yep. up you are is completely irrelevant. If you go up really high and don't have speed, you're coming back down. Like, yep. it might take a while, depending upon <laughs> how high up you are, yeah. but you're coming back down. If you have enough speed, if you have enough velocity, now you're just going to keep falling over and over and over again. And because you have that speed, you're never going to be able to come back down unless you start to lose some of that speed. Or if you increase that speed, that you're going to go, yeah, let's make Lane. that noise. Boom. For instance, aero braking. Like, you can literally use atmosphere to slow yourself down. And we do that with vehicles, uh, spacecraft at Mars, because uh, we don't have to carry as much fuel then when we do that. Sure, we have to wait 18 months, but, I mean, it's much more advantageous to have 100 kilograms more payload than fuel. Mm -hmm. So Back to the 100 kilometers. The 100 kilometers actually is based on essentially nothing other than a round number. The real mm -hmm. number is... Uh, via uh, Theodore, Doctor, Doctor Theodore, Theodore von Carmen himself, the Carmen line, like Carmen line named the after Carmen. him, the Carmen, the uh, Carmen, the Carmen. Uh, it's eighty-three point eight kilometers plus or minus ten kilometers mm -hmm. because it's not a perfect circle, mm -hmm. yep. and the atmosphere can kind of it will kind of wibble yeah. wobble. Solar activity influences it a lot. It wibble wobbles. Yeah, wibble wobbles. It wibble wobbles. It, 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 it's timey wimey. It's timey wimey. It wibble jiggles. Wobble. Yeah, atmosphere. So, it yeah. twerks. It's wonky. It twerks. <laughs> Our atmosphere twerks. It might. Oh man. Cool. So the point is, 100 kilometers has nothing to do with anything, and it doesn't mean just because you're at 100 kilometers does not mean that you're making it into orbit. It doesn't mean you can make it around the Earth at all. That has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> uh, what yeah. really what really matters is at that 83.8. That's essentially the threshold where lifting body can no longer lift. It can't do anything. Like, okay. yeah. there's no more atmosphere for you to, like a jet will not work there. Uh, there's just nothing for it to lift up with. At that point, you you right. must maintain speed. The only thing that will keep you up there is speed, not uh, anything mm -hmm. else. Okay, yeah. so Mike has been like shaking like, his head, yes and no, but through all, both, sure, all of you talking. So <laughs> Mike, go ahead. It's like one of the early uh, Pioneer missions. I think it was Pioneer 3 or Pioneer 4. Uh, it reached an altitude of something like 10,000 kilometers, but its upper stage didn't fire when it was supposed to to circularize its orbit. So it was a 10,000 kilometer suborbital flight. That <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. W without the speed, you don't have orbit. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Take you know, over your comment, but no, I no, did. No. Uh, so, uh, oh my goodness, there's a couple things in here. Um, oh no, it's an, it's an, it's our new is it a planet debate. There you go. Uh, Dar Sim <laughs> said Scott Manley did an excellent video recently about the Carmen line and why 100 kilometers is an arbitrary point as an arbitrary point is a bit too high. Mm -hmm. It um, is, yes. Kate McCoy came up with uh, this quick and dirty calculation of 28,475 kilometers per hour for one kilometer altitude. Yep, and that's not far off from orbital velocity. Which is, so, what, 22... Uh, just about 28,000. 28, so, yeah, just um, in that range. Then so. Oh, I'm thinking... 17,500 miles an hour is like 20... It's not 28. 2,800. Uh, just about 20,000 yeah. yeah. And then uh, Paul Warlow from YouTube says, a recent study has proven that the Carmen line should be 80 kilometers as Mr. Carmen calculated. The FAI is going to look at this the next year and change it from 100 to 80 if this info is correct. Absolutely. And if you want more um, information, in, there's that comment. But then also, if you go back to last week's episode on YouTube, actually I actually have links to those things in, in that comment as well. Yeah. So you can actually oh, research some of those. One last one really quickly. Uh, Helio Pausing says, sometimes satellite drop drop down to 80 kilometers. So if you're talking about, like, mm -hmm. that's the height mm -hmm. in which to yeah. keep orbit, um, that kind of goes. Yeah, well, but again, it's not, it's not height. I mean, that's, that's right. just where no, it's no, no, easier exactly. because you don't have air resistance. You don't have things getting in your way, causing you to expend a bunch of energy to push through that, uh, and then also causing you to put a giant heat shield on there. Mm -hmm. It's just a place where, you know, the less stuff you have bombarding your spacecraft to try to slow it down, the easier it is to keep it in an orbital plane because yes. you don't have to expend as much energy to keep it moving at that speed. Yes. Cool. Whew. Next that question. Or next All right. Comment? Uh, next comment mm -hmm. is Jade. Hello. John Erickson from YouTube <laughs> says, Hello. feature request, fill in a calendar calendar emoji with other stuff than launches. Well, the like calendar landings. emoji didn't make it on the screen. Oh, well, it's still there. Well, no, he typed out well, calendar emoji. Did. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> go on. Like landings at other bodies, information releases, and other happenings people might want to tune into. This calendar could also be votable for premium people for most interesting events, giving hmm. you good feedback to bring up to next episode when reporting on these events. Thanks for a good show. See ya. 
Um, and I thought this was an interesting comment because as we get into 2019 and we're constantly improving the show and innovating, um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to bring that up to the crew, especially you, Ben. Like, what do you think about kind of maybe introducing things other than launches into the calendar and then, you know, integrating even more, you know, um, our patrons Having them yeah, vote for I, like cool stuff. I really stuff. like the idea of mm -hmm. the citizens of tomorrow, of our patrons being able to vote on more things and have more rewards yeah. and different rewards. More of a say. Uh, but yeah, more of a say in the show. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be pretty cool. I think it should be like I feel like the orbital calendar should be its own thing, though, right? So because uh -huh. that's we're all we're space nerds. We like launches. Right, so we kind of like back-to-back -back lunches. We like back-to-back -back lunches. Who doesn't? But. <laughs> but uh, I, I think that calendar will be its thing, but that second commercial break that we have, it yeah. doesn't need to be, like, we could put another calendar in there for, like, upcoming space orbital conferences, orbital occurrences. Space Spa <laughs> yes, EVAs. Um, but like, Interplanetary incidences. <laughs> 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 Would you say intergalactic planetary? Uh, planetary intergalactic? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. now, don't you tell me to stop. <laughs> no, stop the algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sound just like him? <laughs> well, guys, some, one of the big things I'm looking forward to is the Chang'e 5 uh, uh, lander from uh, China because it has a sample return mission on it. So mm. next year, we're going to talk about the first rocket launch from the moon. Yeah, or but Mike, that was the first wow. segment, so now you're not allowed to talk about oh, it. Anymore. That was wow. first segment. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was so <laughs> first segment. I uh, know. I think that's an interesting <laughs> idea. And actually, if you have ideas as to what you'd like to see in that second commercial break, or how we should execute on another calendar, like what would you what would you like to see in that calendar? Uh, the other trick is going to be figuring out how we fill that calendar. So the orbital launch calendar is filled with launch library data that even says on there powered by launch library. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really easy for us to go and then I just go to launch library and go yoink and stick that into the calendar. For something that's not powered by launch library, like where do we pull that data set from? So ideas welcome. Uh, yeah. Throw it in the comments on YouTube or community actually would be an interesting idea. Yeah. Or maybe we just have an ongoing community thread. I don't know. Uh, oh, I would, Stuff. I, I don't know how to, I think it's a great idea. I'm not sure how to execute on it. Would love some help on figuring out how to make that go. Nice. There you go. All right, Mike, close out, close out 2018. You get the last <laughs> comment of the year, Mike. No Congrats. pressure. Don't screw it up. Yeah, Mike, it must be good. <laughs> Comes from M. Jones off of Twitter. Uh, M. Jones followed by a bunch of numbers. Uh, they say, <laughs> dang, Mike, four major launches in one day. Launches tomorrow include Soyuz, Falcon 9, Delta 4 Heavy, and now Blue Origin snuck in there. I can't wait to watch you on the next app tomorrow. 2019 is going to be a super year. Hold on tight. Oh, you just might lose that dollar bet to, uh, uh, to Ben. Oh, it's been lost. We'll see. Uh, obviously, we, we've talked quite a bit about wah, that, but wah. I thought that this was just uh, really cool. And 2019 <laughs> is going to be a super year. This year was crazy, and that whole scrub simber that day was just <laughs> nuts this week. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We're going to have – it's going to be amazing because uh, we saw – like, we had to build Launch Minute for 2018, right? There was a moment where we did 20 minutes, tw over 20 minutes just on launches, and I looked at that and I went, this is going to get worse. And it did, by the way. It absolutely did. Like, we, that was only, like, four launches. Then we had, like, five and sometimes, like, sometimes six on the schedule. And so Launch Minute was born out of 2018 out of necessity to get, pe get you excited about launches and, and bring that launch data to you, but at the same time keep that timing into something that's reasonable even, even, like, I mean, I think 2019, there's a possibility we'll have our first 10-minute launch minute. You think so? Maybe. Okay. Low possibility, but okay. yeah, it's, it's not out of the cards. I'll I think definitely go get more snacks during that. Yeah, he really, you legitimately did get up and get, <laughs> yeah. so you're like, I'm going to go get some chocolate. Launch minute started, he got up and he got chocolate. It, yeah, it, I that did. actually happened. I went to the green room and I got chocolate. Yeah, so. the green room. Who wouldn't? I mean, there were six minutes. Yeah, so, yeah, right. time. So. All right, um, that's our show. That's our last show for 2018. That's our last show for Orbit 11. Uh, starting the first week, I believe, in January is when we begin Orbit 12. Should be a lot of fun. I'm excited yeah. to begin Orbit January 12. January 5th. January 5th, Orbit 12, 12.01. <sighs> Crazy. Yeah, 
No. Anyhow, 12.01, and uh, these are the people who are going to help to make that happen. These are Escape Velocity citizens who have contributed $10 or more to this episode. They got their name in the show three different times. As Jared likes to say, that's more often than we get our own name in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, we that's also right. have our Orbital citizens who have contributed $5 or more to this specific episode. You get your name in the show twice. Uh, thank you so much for contributing to the show. We also have our suborbital citizens. These are $2.50 or more. Uh, and uh, I'll just kind of pause here for a moment and once again thank absolutely everyone on the screen for helping to contribute to the show. Whether you're a brand new citizen or whether you've been contributing for, for years at this point, we really appreciate everything that you have helped us to accomplish throughout all of 2018. And of course our ground support citizens. These are people who have contributed anywhere between one penny and two dollars and forty nine cents. And I just love that this screen gets Part, part of me truly enjoys how hard it is to find things on that screen because of how small that text <laughs> is. And I, I'm excited for 2019 for that text to get smaller and smaller uh, just because it means that we're doing something right and that you guys enjoy what we're doing and you're willing to essentially buy us a cup of coffee once once a week for us to continue to do the show. Uh, so thank you to all of our ground support mm -hmm. citizens, suborbital, orbital, and escape velocity citizens for helping to make 2018 just a fantastic year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for those of you that are patrons, we just had a Patreon hangout. Make sure to go over to Patreon, check out. You can watch the whole thing in full. Uh, and then always leave your comments, feedback, criticism, whatever you've got. Yeah, you, you can make it public on YouTube, like we're pointing down on YouTube. Do it on iTunes or wherever. Actually, that's another thing. Uh, I'm just going to take forever to close out this show. Um, iTunes. We are on iTunes. You can download the video part of the show. Mm -hmm. You also have an audio-only edition on iTunes, mm -hmm. Spotify, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your favorite podcasting apps, wherever they might be. Um, we would appreciate feedback. If you want to just help the show, don't want to contribute financially, like five stars, unless you hate the show, then, you know, th <laughs> then we're a different show. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, five stars, that, and then uh, just, uh, just feedback as to why you like the show and, and, and what it means to you. That would be great in each one of those platforms. iTunes, Spotify, blah, 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 blah. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. We'll see you in 2019. Bye, guys. Bye.